From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. I'm Jonathan Ambarian in Helena. If you think Montana voters have had their final say on marijuana issues, think again. I'll tell you about some of the local measures up for consideration this June. I'm Joe St. George. To figure out who's going to control Congress after the November midterm election, you got to leave Washington. Coming up, we talk with real voters in one of the most hotly contested parts of the country to see what's driving their vote. What issues are they concerned about? We go in depth on the big election this November coming up. 631, Chet Lehman, Matt Elwell with you here. Uh, teases that involve Capitol buildings. Yeah. Are, both of them, the <laughs> nation's capital and the and Montana the capital, capital in that. That's right. This close to sneezing. Thank I you. know. I, I was I, handing I was the, ready, the, yeah, the I, remote over to Matt to handle. We're done with the sneeze. The fog's rolling in. It is. Everything uh, is right with the world on this uh, Thursday. And I want to tell people, I know the sun's up early and mm -hmm. uh, there's daylight. Please turn on your lights. It's yep. hard to yep. see, and especially with all these kids going to school and blah, blah, blah. Right. Turn on your lights, please. Yep. It'll yep. help yep. everybody. Yeah, the fog is pretty dense in a few areas. The showers that we picked up yesterday, clear skies. Uh, that has really intensified some of that fog in southwest Montana. By the afternoon, we're talking rain showers. By the evening, snow showers that may impact your drive tomorrow. Daytime highs today, not bad. Into the 50s, it is below average for this point in the year, but we're talking rain showers for the afternoon and evening. Some of those showers will become more intense as we head into the overnight. We'll talk about the impacts it'll have over the next couple of days coming up in just a few minutes. All right, thank you, Matt. 632 now, 2020 marijuana legalization measure was not the last time voters will see something about marijuana on their ballots. Numerous local votes about it will appear in this year's primary ballot. MTN senior political reporter Jonathan Amberian explains. State analysts report that 14 counties across Montana, including nearly half of the state's population, will put marijuana-related ballot measures before voters this June. In two counties, voters will decide whether to restrict recreational marijuana operations. Granite County will consider whether to ban adult-use dispensaries after residents collected petition signatures. Yellowstone County will vote on banning all adult-use marijuana businesses after county commissioners placed the issue on the ballot. Billings already prohibits adult-use dispensaries in city limits. The Montana Department of Revenue reports around 40 adult-use dispensaries are active in Yellowstone County and one in Granite County. In 12 other counties marked in blue, voters will consider whether to implement 3% local option taxes on recreational sales and medical sales. That includes large counties like Gallatin, Lewis and Clark, Ravalli, and Silverbow. Four counties have already approved local taxes. They'll receive their first payments in June. The state estimates Yellowstone County will receive more than $250,000 based on February and March sales. Missoula County only approved a tax on recreational marijuana and is set to receive about $120,000. Park County, where a local tax took effect later, could bring in $14,000 from March sales. In Dawson County, the local option tax took effect this month and there are no sales figures available yet. The money distributed to counties will then be shared with local municipalities. The state also reports five other counties are considering possible ballot measures on marijuana for the November election. In Helena, Jonathan Amberian, MTN News. Well, it may be a full six months until the November midterm elections, but you've all likely already seen some campaigning for offices across our state. Nationwide, campaign spending could reach levels only seen in presidential election years. Who controls Congress will affect everything from health care to climate policy over the next two years of the Biden presidency. So what's on the minds of voters in some of the biggest battleground areas of our country, and how do they match your concerns? Our Joe St. George is taking time to speak with the people as opposed to the pundits. Midterm elections are a lot like a puzzle. Each piece like an individual race. Only after it's all put together, the results final, will we really know who controls Congress? Just like some puzzle pieces are trickier than others, some congressional races are more unpredictable. To get the pulse of what people are thinking, we chose this piece and came to this place, Sandusky, Ohio, into Mr. Smith's Coffee House. The House District here is considered one of the most competitive in the country. All right. Over coffee, we found Republicans. I voted for the other guy. Democrats. I identify as a Democrat. Voters. I am 24. All ages. Age is just a number. Midterm elections tend to be referendums on the current president. Personally, I voted for him, and I, I do not feel like he's doing a great job. Which is why Haley Swanger's opinion is interesting. She's 24, a nurse. 
housing is on her mind. Like I hardly make enough money to even save anything to buy a house or put a down payment on a house. Sally, who is 86. He has taken care of the vaccine. Also voted for the president. But the pump price worries her. Inflation is not the way it should be. The gasoline, I drive 36 miles one way to get to work. We all have difference in opinions. Mark Harper, who's here too, says the people in charge deserve more credit. He only has so much ability to control gas prices. As for Republicans we met. Health care is a big issue. John Rarbarker votes proudly conservative, but he does wish his party would work more to figure out prescription drugs. And my regular uh, prescription is for 1400 a month for one. How do you afford that? Well, you, I can't now. One thing that struck me. Do you ever think about what happened on January 6th? Is that like... A, no. A lot of issues that dominate partisan talk shows. It's not really one of my major things. Didn't come up during my visit. Voters have other priorities. Priorities that will decide who wins later this year in the ultimate puzzle that is... American politics in Sandusky, Ohio. I'm Joe St. George. In other news this morning, 15 years after his Nobel Prize winning report on climate change, Professor Steve Running still sees cause for concern when it comes to the planet's future. But he tells MTN's Dennis Bragg it's a case of progress over panic. I'm Dennis Bragg in Missoula. 15 years after his landmark climate change report, Dr. Steve Running says there's good news, but also challenges remain. When University of Montana professor Steve Running and his colleagues on the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change won the Nobel Peace Prize in 2007, the headlines were over the debate, not the actual impacts of a warming planet. Now from fires to floods, attention has shifted. I looked up 20 years ago, I started giving climate talks around Missoula, and in, in fair measure, the message hasn't changed. That message of cutting carbon emissions repeated last week when running appeared before the action group 350 Montana, where he noted encouraging but not lasting signs during the COVID slowdowns with the same emission rebounds as before. I remember being fooled back in the 2008 economic downturn. And I, I actually was in Sweden in 09 saying, looks like we've turned the corner. The hell we had the very next year. Running praises some improvements, but says as a whole, we're not seeing the rapid progress driving down carbon emissions and turning rising temperatures. And of course, that's not happening worldwide, even though the U.S. is not doing badly. Our, our, our emissions are lower, but uh, not enough yet. But running tells me that real progress is being made, especially with the deployment of LED lights, which are saving vast amounts of energy. Certainly wind and solar power now is, is not only viable, it's actually cheaper than coal power. So they have reached a point of complete competitiveness. Uh, and now electric cars are on the way. I mean, it's it's inspiring. You know, I, I struggle with this a lot. I've got two little kids and I worry a lot about the world they're going to grow up in. And, um, but I, I don't think despair is the answer. And so we're trying to do as much as we possibly can. And, you know, I'm it's, it's great to see lots of people here doing the same thing. Now that we know what we need to do, we've known for a long time. Um, we, we need to act on it and we've got to at some point we've got to draw a line in the sand and say you know we're not going to take it anymore we need to change the way we're doing things and running says not overreacting but taking a slow and steady wins the race approach we have decades to do this we don't have to do it in a couple of years we do need to change the momentum in a couple of years but we don't have to reach the finish line for for decades and if we take that long view and just kind of get to work then I think we're doing all we can. In Missoula, Dennis Bragg, MTN News. All right, thank you very much, Dennis. 640 now, we're going to take a break.